In this video, we're going to be having another look at OctaPrint, looking at the interface and plugins and integrating in Home Assistant. Make sure you stick around and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech, and today we're going to be having another look at OctaPrint. Today, we're going to be having a look at the OctaPrint interface and how to use it. We're then going to look into some plugins and some that I'd recommend for you. And finally, we'll integrate it into Home Assistant. So, let's get going. So, this is the OctaPrint interface. On the left hand side, we've got a number of areas. We've got our connection, which can hide away, uh, and that's where you connect and disconnect from your printer. Uh, we've got the state of the printer, looking at what it's doing, if it's printing any files, how long's left, that sort of thing. We can choose to print or pause or cancel any prints that are going on. And then we've got the files section. And in here, we can see all our G-code files. And that is both files that are stored on the SD card in the printer and on OctaPrint directly. And we can sort these into folders and move them around, delete them, or just send them to print. At the bottom, we've got some notifications if they were to ever pop up. Then on the right hand side, we've got a number of tabs. The first one is our temperature. And this is showing us a graph of temperature over time. And it's got our tool temperature with the actual temperature and the target. And if we preheat it, you can see that the red line pops up and it's now going to start to target. And we can see in here that this red line is kind of popping up to try and match the target temperature. So let's turn that off. And we can also offset our temperature if we're finding it's a bit hot or something. Um, and this is a nice, quick, easy way to preheat before you set to print. Next tab is control. If you have a webcam connected, that will pop up here. Um, but it just gives you basic movements to control your X, Y, and Z coordinates. And you've got a multiplier so you can move a little bit or a lot. And then also for extrusion and for fans, that sort of thing. Next up, we have our G-code viewer. So if a printer is printing, then this will populate itself, showing you exactly where the tool head is, and you can see what's going on. Next up is the terminal. So that is telling us what's going on. That's all the commands that are being sent to and from the printer. Um, obviously, nothing's happening, so it's just telling us that nothing's happening constantly. And then last of all, we have the time lapse. Now again, you need a webcam plugged in, obviously, for this. And it will give you basic settings on how to create a time lapse within OctaPrint. At the top, we have our user settings, which is fairly basic. Language, application keys, that sort of thing. We have some more notifications or announcements, more on the kind of whole of Octopi as opposed to just your printer. And last of all, we have the settings. Now, this is quite a, a deep thing. We've got our connection to the printer, profiles to the printer. So if you have multiple printers, you can add multiple profiles. Uh, temperatures to preset. So as you say right, earlier, I could click on it and it would preheat to that temperature. So if you want to add some more in here, you can do that. Terminal filters, G-code script. So if you're slicing in here, it will add in some G-code. So if I press cancel in Octoprint, it would do this stuff here. Uh, after it finished and you can add them for other things as well. We've got some basic features, some webcam support if we have a webcam ready to go, access control for more accounts, G-code viewer as you've seen, the API. So there is a global API but that is about to be removed because obviously it gives full access to everything. So instead you, you now have to generate an application key for individual applications assigned to users. Under Octoprint we have some server commands, some folder locations, we can change the appearance of things if we wanted to, uh, we've got some login capabilities and we can find them, plugin manager which we will come back to, uh, software updates, you can check for updates here and it will tell you and you can choose to go from a stable build onto a maintenance build, for example. Any announcements that might appear, events, backups, anonymous usage and error tracking. 
And then more plug-in-y stuff, firmware check, printer notifications, virtual printer, if you were wanting a fake printer for whatever reason. And that is the interface of Oxprint. It's reasonably simple. So next up is plugins. So if we go back into our settings and head to our plugin manager, you can see there are a selection of plugins already installed. Now most of these are obviously the standard ones that come with the printer or come with Octoprint pre-installed uh, to get you going, but we're going to get some more. So hundreds of plugins you can get, 324 to be exact, um, doing all sorts of things depending on your setup and what you want. There are a few that I would recommend and a few that you've got to get if you've got a, an end of three. So the end of three ones, we need the Creality times two temperature reporting fix, and we need the Creality temperature fix. So those are key to actually getting your printer to work. I'm not sure what they do, um, but they have, it was on a guide that said that you had to have them, so I'm guessing you have to have them. So in terms of recommended plugins, I would recommend Octolapse. Now Octolapse gives you the ability to make much prettier time lapses. So the built-in time lapse kind of just takes a photo on each layer whenever it's on each layer basically. Whereas this one you can do cool things like making sure the print head is out of the way so it just looks like it's growing each layer. Um, so it just provides you with much nicer time lapses at the end. Another one I'd recommend is Themify. Now Themify basically gives you some themes so you can have a dark interface, which obviously we all like. Uh, next up is Dashboard. Octoprint Dashboard gives you a pretty dashboard and it can give you a few more stats and some graphs of what's actually going on and how long theirs are taking, that sort of thing, um, which is a nice kind of quick and easy dashboard interface that you can look at if you're in the Octoprint interface. And the last one I'm going to recommend is the Better Heater Timeout. So what this does is it basically turns off the heat if it hasn't been used for a while. So if you accidentally leave it on for ages, or maybe it's finished a print and stayed on, or you preheated it and then forgot and didn't come back to it um, to start your print, then this will just turn it off. So it's just a bit of a safety feature. Now that's a few that I'd instantly recommend. There are obviously hundreds more that can do anything from controlling your smart plugs to turn the printer off at the mains, to controlling LED strips that you can put around it to give you a status light icon kind of progress bar. Um, you've got ones to make the interface better. You've got ones that provide you a button that you can hot swap your filament. Um, so plenty of plenty of options out there and they all do very good things and there are always more being made. So that's the plugins. So our final job is integrating into Home Assistant. Right. So in Home Assistant, you may find that your printer is automatically discovered. And that's without having to do anything at all. If it isn't, then go into your integrations and search Octoprint and it'll pop up there. So if it's automatically discovered, you just press configure, add in your username and we click submit. We then need to head over to the Octoprint UI and this pop up will have appeared and we just need to give it access. We can then go back into Home Assistant and it has worked. Octoprint is in Home Assistant. So what do we get from our Octoprint interface? We get a number of entities that are quite useful for your current printing status. So you've got a start time, printing error, printing, job percentage, finish time and current state. So if I now set a print to print, then we can head into our configuration and we can see all sorts of things. So with a printer that is printing, we can see our estimated finish time, which is actually given to us as a time time, not an in, what do you call it? Uh, we've got our percentage of the job. We know whether it's printing or not. Obviously we don't have an error and we have a start time and that's when you press go in Octoprint, not 
So it had to warm up, obviously, which is why it's taken a while. And in Octoprint, we can again see our temperatures are at the temperature and we can see our G-code viewer, we can see the print head moving around doing its thing. So there we go, that is the Octoprint interface, some plugins and integrated into Home Assistant. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.